Is this it? I mean, maybe. A pre-built that's not oozing pus out of every orifice? Wait, what? Rumor has it that in the loser league of borderline villainy that is the OEM pre-built space, Lenovo is one of the better and more overlooked options. So what we're going to do in today's video is see how this Lenovo Legion holds up and if it is actually a better option than its lead-based paint-sniffing peers. Now I bought this leg ion on sale from Best Buy, which in my opinion is kind of the only way to buy an OEM pre-built. They are often on sale, and if you're paying full price for them, you're essentially just being market gouged. Uh, but with that, let's get into the box and see what this leg ion looks like. Wow, that is some spectacular packing foam. That's, that's a good start. Stuck. Oh, every time. Starting strong in the front, we have actual mesh with two fans behind it, which means that this chassis isn't going to double as a chemical furnace. The front I.O. is fairly basic, but it'll get the job done. What is exciting though is we have more mesh in the top with what looks like actual radiator mounting space. Around the back we have another fan, although things go downhill pretty fast from there, considering that the rear I.O. is... Wow, that's Spartan as all hell. Graphics card I.O. wise is relatively standard for this price category and then we have some ominous looking power supply. Now around the side we're going to take off this what I think is glass side panel and have a closer look at the internal layout of the system. Wow, it is, um, it's a real mixed bag in here. Parts of the system make me physically aroused with joy, where other parts kind of make me want to start listening to the voices again. Now let's start off with the most obvious problem, which is something that I never mention in any of my videos. The fact that it's only got a single 8 gig stick of RAM, which is doubly problematic considering that under this pretty awesome looking cooler, we have a Ryzen 5 3600, and there is nothing that Ryzen hates more than single channel RAM. So that's, that's, that's a pretty big issue. Uh, cable management is also... It's, it's, it's a little bit questionable, but then again, there's so much exciting about this system. Let's get back to this cooler. Look at that. It's all matte blacked out, and it's a cooler that can actually cool the CPU that's under it. Potentially, we'll see how that goes, but it looks very promising. We've got a fan in the back with two fans in the front that actually provide airflow. There's not just a bunch of metal covering it up for no particular reason at all. This motherboard is actually not some weird, stupid proprietary shape. It looks like it's just a standard MATX motherboard, which is awesome. It means that at some point, if you want to upgrade, you can remove this motherboard and put something else in there, which already puts it leagues above the average OEM pre-built. Around the back, there's more cause for confused arousal. Here we have a Lenovo RGB hub, something that I didn't really ever think I'd see. Uh, and I guess that means that all of the fans light up. There's even a cute little diagram that shows you how it works if you want to change it, so that's cool. It's also got a CPU cooler mounting cutout in the back of the motherboard tray, which means that if you wanted to change out the cooler that it comes with, you could do it without removing the motherboard from the case, which is such a nice touch, especially for an OEM pre-built. This case also has a bunch of cable management features that actually make sense. This is really surprising. Uh, oh yeah, actually on that note, let's check out the power supply. It seems to be, what is that, a 400 watt 80 plus gold FSP unit, which yeah, it's, it's decent. And it's just a standard ATX power supply. So if in the future you want to change this out for something else, you could do that pretty easily. Let's reassemble it and put it to the second hurdle, which is where most OEM pre-builds break both their kneecaps at launch, which is the venereal bloatware test. <coughs> You know the whole VD situation on the PC is worrying when you have the McAfee, the McAfee icon pinned to the start menu. Now the first thing is Lenovo Vantage, which I'm guessing is their like control center software. That's 
to be expected. And then there's the Alpha VD McAfee over here. Other than that though, it's, it's not too bad. This is definitely not Dell level VD. Let's see what this Lenovo Vantage looks like. Yeah, so this is a fairly standard, like just control suite uh, with like system updates, power, media, health scan. The moment I fed the system a bit of internet, this popped up, uh, which I don't like, especially not this pop up over here. Um, Legion ultimate support? Explore options. Is it asking me to pay for support here? Warranty and services. Oh, okay. So at least this isn't just by default forced down your throat, but I, I, I don't love that. I don't want the Vantage toolbar, no. I don't want the Legion Game Shop either. Or, why does it want me to use Stadia Pro on a gaming system? That's stupid. Okay, so we have our Ryzen 5 3600, which is a, a great little gaming CPU. We have our single eight gig stick of DDR4, which is actually running at its rated speed of 3200 megahertz out of the box. That's good. And then finally, we have our GTX 1660 Super, which is a fairly standard OEM version of the card. Is that, is that it? Is, is that all the, oof. Yeah, it's a very basic BIOS we have going here. Yeah, so if you like fiddling with your BIOS, this is, this is not really the best motherboard. Okay, this all seems fairly standard. So let's see how much that single eight gig stick of RAM affects the Ryzen 3600's gaming performance. The gaming performance, considering the RAM configuration, was actually way better than I was expecting. All of these games were very playable at 1080p high settings. I used Battlefield 5 online for my like extended gaming test, and yeah, it was great to game on. There was the occasional bit of frame drop, but nothing unmanageable. The temperatures are also amazing for an OEM pre-built. They set the fan curve up so that they don't allow any of the components to go above 70 degrees Celsius. So every now and then it would creep up to 70 degrees Celsius, the fans would spin up and then it would drop down back to the mid 60s, which again is completely unheard of for an OEM pre-built. Uh, on the note of the fan noise while ramping up, it doesn't actually get any noticeably louder. So that's nice. It's not like it reenacts a jet turbine to control the temperatures in the way that other OEM systems do. Yeah, the system is quiet even under load, which is crazy. Um, although I, I have to say that the fans may not be very noisy, but they do have this kind of irritating whine that they make. Yeah, I don't know, someone at Lenovo cracked this deep, mystical code, this secret that no one else in the industry has yet to figure out. Apparently, if you have a decent cooler with good airflow, your components don't run very hot. I don't know who the sorcerer is that figured this out, but they're, they're clearly way ahead of their time. Now, don't get me wrong, it definitely has some problems. The RAM configuration is problematic. However, there doesn't seem to be a single pre-built in this price class that doesn't have this problem, and it's relatively easily solved. I would just factor a RAM upgrade into the price of buying one of these systems. Uh, I would go with a Crucial Ballistics kit, because another one of those OEM pre-built tropes that's hung around with this Lenovo system is the fact that it doesn't recognize XMP profiles. You need JEDEC compliant RAM. Without this JEDEC compliance, your RAM's just gonna run at its base frequency, which is not great for Ryzen gaming performance. And Crucial is one of the only gaming RAM manufacturers that actually has JEDEC profiles enabled on their gaming kits. So I'll have a kit linked in the description below. I've actually got one coming in the mail, so I'll test it out tomorrow, I think, and then I'll pin a comment on the video. But yeah, if you get a 16 gig kit of RAM with this system, it'll make a huge difference to your gaming performance. Because not only is it single versus dual channel, but it's also the fact that you only have eight gigs of RAM, which isn't really enough for this tier 
tier of gaming system anymore. Another one of those weird OEM tropes that's hung around with this system is the VD bloatware situation on it. It's not the worst I've ever seen, it's not like Dell level, but it's still not great. However, again, that's a relatively easily solved problem. You just need to reinstall Windows on it. I have a guide for that linked down below. Another OEMism that I discovered is, you know that CPU cooler backplate that I was so excited about being revealed? Well, after taking the CPU cooler off to check the thermal paste, a thermal paste application that was deemed acceptable, uh, I wanted to see how easy that is to remove if you wanted to put a different cooler on there. And well, Lenovo has glued that backplate on there real good. I checked on forums and stuff and apparently you can remove it, but I did a whole bunch of prying and it wouldn't come off. So I wouldn't recommend messing with that, which is a little bit naughty. Although I did discover on the same forums that some Arctic coolers can just mount straight to that backplate. So if you did have a lower profile cooler with this system, you could just swap it out for one of those. In conclusion, should you buy one of these Lenovo Leg Ion systems? If your selection is the open sewer pipe that is the OEM pre-built space, then yes, this Lenovo is head and shoulders above its competition. It's kind of like comparing single cellular life to like Crustacea. Like there is just a huge evolutionary gap between them. Yes, it does still have some annoying OEMisms, but none of them are a deal breaker in my opinion, and they're fairly easily worked around. Compared to custom systems these days, it's also a very good option just because of things like availability, and it still maintains a lot of very important elements of a custom system. This really is one of the most custom PC OEM pre-builds I've ever seen. And on that note, I do also have a video coming soon where I test out the most popular gaming system on Amazon. This is like the gaming pre-build that all of you are buying for some reason. And it'll be interesting to see how it stacks up to this Lenovo Leg Ion beast over here. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what you think of the system. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until the next video, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.